Hey folks, Josephine Sabora here. I'm back to doing a new movie review after just a week or so. Um, I had to concentrate on posting a few more commercial breaks as usual. Uh, but the last video I did was a Dollar Tree uh, Black Friday uh, physical media finds that I got you know, on Blu-ray and, and DVD. Um, I know I haven't done the other Black Friday video where I got something at Target, Walmart, and Best Buy. I know because even though I'm late on the game, I mean, we had to do a lot of errands. I mean, because we're getting ready for Christmas. I mean, we had to buy all the gifts for the family. And we just set up the Christmas tree. We just had to get some new Christmas lights because the other one had died. So we had to set this up so it would be perfect. Um, and unfortunately, um, my family had been at school. They, they had to finish their finals. You know, My sister just did her projects, so she finished those. She had a presentation that she got. So we had to go to the art gallery to not only uh, take pictures of all the arts that she did, but also from all the students around the campus. So it was perfect, and it was amazing, it was wonderful. Everyone did their hard work on them, and I'm very proud. And I'm very proud of my sister for, for taking all the advantage to do so. It, it was a lot of hard work, but she did it at her art sculpture class. Yeah, it's just like when I took my sculpture class uh, at GCC and all the hard work that I was doing, even though with the help of my mom because she took it as well. So, it's perfect. Um, so, of course, uh, the last movie I reviewed was Home Sweet Home Alone. Yeah, Home Bittersweet Home Alone, as I would like to call it. Another horrible movie in the Home Alone franchise uh, after Home Alone 4 and 5. I've yet to tear that one apart and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so, well. Yeah, and we're already in the middle of December so hopefully I might still have a chance to review some Christmas movies. I even saw another Christmas movie recently on HBO Max so I've yet to make a chance on that one. Um, but I did However, would love to watch maybe a few more to keep up with the channel, you know, especially for December, because pretty soon, you know, there's going to be a lot of things going around, and that's going to be way ahead of schedule, so who knows how this is going to turn out. But, I mean, worst comes to worst, I'm probably going to end up taking a, a huge break from posting my videos and stuff, and just move on for the rest of my life family and all. Hopefully things will be for the better. Because, you know, in the future, I think we are going to be planning on moving to a new place. Um, yeah, we're actually thinking about that, too. So I know that's going to affect everything. <laughs> but who knows how that's going to turn out. So let, let's pray for that. Anyway, uh, last night, um, just to make things better, uh, we finally went to go see a movie. It's the brand new CGI animated fantasy comedy that's from Disney. It's the 60th film that's produced, simply called El Canto. Yep, it's a story about um, the young girl who, who has like a big family that's uh, being run by Abiella Amba Baragro, which happens to be the grandmother of this young girl named Maribel. She unfortunately is the more quirky type of, of the family that doesn't have um, a gift like everyone else does. So now she's about to discover why that she doesn't have one, which leads to a big mystery. I guess you could kind of say this is quite different from the other movie that Disney had put out with Pixar called Coco, but that's a different story here. 
when it comes to cultural Hispanic backgrounds that spread across many generations of friends, family, and relatives. Uh, they also have the original songs that are being written by Lynn Manuel Miranda, who just did Hamilton recently from Disney Plus, and In the Heights for HBO Max, which did play in feeders. It's now on home video, and it is on the HBO Max as well. So you get to see it. The blending in with with English and Spanish uh, music put together. So it's definitely the universal language of them all. Plus, with a talented cast, you know, playing all these colorful characters, you know, with each of them have a gift of their own, only leaving to one. And wonderful animation that brought its spirit and its subtlety of its story. This is one truly amazingly fun animated feature. Star Stephanie Beatrice, uh, who was in the TV show Blooken 99, uh, but she was also in the movie Short Term 12 with Brie Larson. Maria Cecilia Botero, along with Olga Bredis, uh, John Leguizamo, as you may remember him from Carlitos Way, yes, the, the live action Super Mario Bros. movie. But he's been in a lot of movies, some TV shows, and he's a comedian, as we all know. But he's an excellent actor. Mario Castello, Jessica Darrow, Angie Sepeda, Carolina Galta, Diane Guerrero, William Badarama, as you may remember him from that 70s show when he played Fez. Yeah, I know he moved on to other stuff. Odessa, Rennie Felis, Ravi Cabot, Cambiers, Malumba, and Alan Tight. It's written by Charisse Castro Smith, along with Jared Bush, who's also the director of the movie, with several writers to join in, along with Brian Howard. The movie begins set in this one Hispanic country. We meet a young Alma Madrigal, who will soon become the umbrella, yeah, grandmother, who escaped her home from an army of conflicts going around. She lost her husband Pedro during the battle, but she did save three infant children, Julieta, Peppa, and Bruno. And then she later brought in a magical candle that creates a sentient house known as the Caseta, which then brings in with this entire house, along with many of the village around that's being created as it magically appears which has the hardened soul and then with all the uh, Matagrals to live in to be safe they will soon become a more expanded family that actually has superhuman abilities uh, that they can control to help all the villagers around. I mean, this is one beautiful village where it's so magical it can actually skip a beat, you know, with all the towels moving around here and there as it controls, you know, it can even move the furniture, the chairs, everything. So, but then you begin to s explore the entire family that has all the gifts that they can choose and they can do whatever they want like you can see one who actually is very strong actually can carry a lot of donkeys around move around you got another one who actually has a rain cloud that that can actually change uh, within seconds you got another one who could transform into a person after another person and so on and so forth <laughs> Even this father who actually 
has all these bead stains that are very ugly, but it does tend to transform into normal. Um, so yes, so they're doing what they can to protect the cassetta. However, Bruno's gift of preconation had caused multiple conflicts for the family that leads him to be ostracized. And this is where we meet this young this daughter of Julietta's who actually had no special ability whatsoever named Maribel who's considered to be imperfect weird and quirky but she could be deeply emotional at times and incredibly empathetic as as quoted so during that night Peppa's son Antonio had gained the ability to speak to animals so Maribel had suddenly sees the entire cassetta cracking you now just when one had dropped and she just got a cut on her hand so everyone was just celebrating the Antonio's gift that, she, that he has so she tries to warn her family about this but no one seems to listen once they found out that everything was back to normal so maybe this is just part of her imagination. So at that point on, Maribel that night was trying to save the magic of the cassetta by going around investigating and questioning her family members, joining in with her older sister Lu Luessa. Yes, and that's the one who had the strong superhuman strength that she can do anything. Which unfortunately she begins to lose her powerful strength. Um, but she, anyway, she suggested Maribel that Bruno's room may hold some clues to the phenomenon that's happening. Therefore, Maribel had went inside and she begins to spot a cave of sand, which leads to all these cliffs around that she was going from one to the other. Yeah, she was having some difficulty getting there, uh, joining in with this toucan. That follows. Um, <laughs> yeah, which then sh that too can became a quitter. And then all of a sudden, she just spotted a vision that's from this glass uh, plate that's been cracked and it's been hidden inside this big sand where she puts it together and that's where she begins to see an image of herself. Um, that's right behind the background of the cassetta where you begin to see the cracks or the ones that you don't see the cracks at all just normal that can lead to this um, this particular mystery but as soon as this happened that's where the house uh, starts to crack you know everyone's starting to lose their power one way or the other but then everyone had became very suspicious because now they begin to find out uh, Maribel's secret and they started to spill the beans even though she tries to to warn them not to because then this is where Alma is going to be very upset you know, Abrella and then this is what's going to lead to what's going to happen like sooner or later you know she'll probably end up being banned just like uh, Bruno but at that point on Maribel did found Bruno. Um, he was hidden somewhere inside his room, uh, joining in with his rats, and so he's probably the one who's under control. But then he's going to be the one who will help Maribel out with the spirit and the vision that she has. So hopefully they'll find a way to control that by actually finding this uh, special uh, butterfly that might lead to what's going to happen next and then in our way to save the candle and the entire cassetta and um, the entire village and I know they celebrate the Alcanto that's part of the festival and all that hopefully nothing will be destroyed in order to save that that's when he she has to find out that the only way to actually you know help this out was to hug her her older sister yeah which unfortunately 
she hated her so much because you know she's pretty jealous of her and this was going to be a lot difficult as we speak because um, yeah her, her older sister Isabella Isabella is um, is pretty much cares about everything that's perfect in her life you know she has all all the flowers the roses and everything but both her and, and Maribel don't don't get along but they try to do their ways to apologize and they did so now they'll make it up for it until everything can be saved but yet things seem to go much worse when the power seems to grow the entire house is being cracked and it's starting to fall apart and Arborella blames uh, Maribel for all the mess that caused so she ran away feeling very uh, very sad about everything that happened because she was trying to warn them about what's going on that she might be the cause of all this maybe because she wasn't listening so to make it up for it she did ex bought the, the magical butterfly as she visioned so now they're going to find a way to not only get their powers back but by be able to rebuild uh, the house of the cassetta and hopefully with the candle that they choose they'll be able and or even be able to find the doorknob and all that they'll be able to Maribel will be able to summon the magic so everything will go back to normal as as rightfully as so so nothing will happen ever again and yes they'll bring in a candle and, and all and and everyone will get their powers back and Maribel will finally get the gift that she's been waiting for and now everyone will finally get back together as a family so they can have some more adventures so there you have it. Um, it's amazingly fun, cute and sweet, um, animated feature. Um, wonderful music all the way around. A lot of subtlety with the story that leads to it. And very colorful characters as I mentioned. Um, I really love this movie. And so far so good. Disney's been getting better and better at their animated features as it follows. I mean, even after Raya and the Last Dragon, another great movie. And I almost see some of the similar tones here, too. Just looking at it. But they're all different movies here. And then... And I love the fact that they went for a lot of comedy in there. And, and I love the characters of uh, Maribel. You know, I love going for quirky type of characters that we want to get into because I could definitely see the personality of her you know with the curly hair and the glasses and all and you know she is very sweet and she's doing what she can you know to solve the mystery but for the character development of Maribel the star of the story here that even shows that an outcast even if they don't have a special gift whatsoever she can still do everything you know she can care for the family she may not have you know a superhuman uh, strength like her older sister does who can lift like a whole pail of donkeys and several buildings and moving around and all or even transformed from one person to the other for one of her cousins or so or even have another um, cousin who, who has a rain cloud or, or having his father you know, having all these ugly beast stains and all that well maybe that's better off or hell or heck even having one of her other members who we can actually look and, and hear and all and the ability and everything. I mean 
no matter what, I mean, she can do everything. She can save the family, she can save the house, the village, and all. She could be more creative. She can be able to, you know, investigate. She can do everything that she, she's been planning for and hoping that this will be her special gift someday. She'll be able to have her particular power. That probably be just as strong as um, Ariella, Alma, and rightly so. That's the special key of this particular story. And that's how we care for them. We're outcasts around. And yeah, they can even have a personality that could be as quirky as they could be. Joining in with Abriella, uh, Amba, Madagra, who was the grandmother of the whole entire village and the Caseta. And she's a very strong woman who's trying to hold on to save her family no matter what happens. I mean, with all the magic that's appearing, they don't want to have any more conflicts happening. So, they can do whatever they can to save. And all these characters that we got joining in are just hilarious, <laughs> fun. Each character that you love and cherish by. Um, there's not even a villain in the movie. I mean, you're expecting maybe Bruno was going to be, but luckily he ain't. Lots of energy, and I love that each family around has their own rooms where you can explore another dimension once you open the doors. Like, for example, Antonio has his own wild kingdom where he can communicate with the animals, wild beasts and all. It's like a jungle in there. And, of course, Isabel, who... Maribel doesn't get along, has a bed of roses. Uh, every family member around um, has their own entire room that's very special. I mean, you wouldn't believe for yourself. And another person who won't have any special gifts, but they actually have their own room where they can do a lot of creativity stuff and everything. Yeah, that, that's very special, as you can see. It's, it's terrific, and it's definitely uh, worth watching more than once. And the music is, is very incredible. Uh, I mean, you can dance along to it, too, you know, skip a beat or so. A lot of great songs, like um, The Family, Marigal, Waiting on a Miracle. The surface pressure and we don't talk about Bruno come to mind so sequence after sequence um, history after history I mean this is gonna go pretty strong and I think it's gonna be nominated for for best animated feature at, at the Oscars as well as Golden Globes when it comes so can wait so check out El Canto, you're going to have fun and won't be disappointed. So that's the film, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.